Hello. Good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's eight o'clock on Friday, the 24th of March. <clears throat> I'll be reading some material in relation to Oscar Romero, one of the three commemorations we could be referring to this morning. The words are Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England, which you'll find on the Church's website, Arima's Daily Prayer, downloadable as apps or Apple Android devices. And uh, I'm in the building. You're welcome to join me 8 and 6 uh, most days. Um, the Zoom code are on the Blythe Valley Church's website and Facebook page. Welcome to David on Zoom. Morning, Dominic. And uh, I'm recording the audio to upload onto my Dominic Dobel YouTube channel presently. <laughs> o oh Lord, open our lips and, and our, our mouth, mouth shall, shall proclaim your, your prayers. prayers. Hear our voice, O oh Lord, according to your faithful love. According, according to, to your judgment, judgment give us life. life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy, to you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. A song of penitence, verses from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the, the Son, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Be forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We scroll on to the Psalm 102, turn to it, if we're following in books, 102, you'll find uh, amongst the Psalms at the back of the book. We'll read by alternate verses, saying the refrain together to open and close, and the glory be after the last verse, pausing to read the prayer that follows, and use it as we see fit. Psalm 102. My help comes from the Lord. O Lord. Oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my crying come before you. I hope not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. When I call, make haste to answer me. For my days are consumed in smoke. <clears throat> my bones burn away as in a furnace. My heart is smitten down and withered like grass so that I forget to eat my bread. From the sound of my groaning, my bones cleave fast to my skin. I am become like a vulture in the wilderness, like an owl that haunts the ruins. <clears throat> I keep watch and then become like a sparrow, solitary upon the housetop. My enemies <clears throat> revile me all the day long, and those who rage at me have sworn together against me. I have eaten ashes for bread, and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of your indignation and wrath, 
for you have taken me up and cast me down. My days fade like a shadow. I am withered like grass. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever, and your name through all generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is time to have mercy on her. Surely the time has come. For your servants love her very stones, and feel compassion for her dust. Then shall the nations fear your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has built up Zion, and shown himself in glory. <clears throat> when he has turned to the prayer of the, de of the destitute, and has not despised their plea. This shall be written for those that come after, and a people yet unborn shall praise the Lord. For he has looked down upon his holy height, from his holy height, from the heavens, he beheld the earth. That he might hear the sighings of the prisoner, <clears throat> and set free those condemned to die. The name of the Lord may be proclaimed in Zion, and his priests and his praises in Jerusalem. When peoples are gathered together, and kingdoms also to serve the Lord. He has brought down my strength in my journey, and has shortened my days. I pray, O my God, do not take me in the midst of my days, your years endure throughout all generations. In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you will endure. They all shall wear out like a garment. <laughs> you shall change them like clothing, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and, the year, and your years will not fail. The children of your servants shall continue and their descendants shall be established in your sight. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, Father and, to and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was at the beginning, beginning, is now, is now and shall, shall be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. My help comes from the Lord. <clears throat> Scrolling past our first reading to the Song of Manasseh, the Canticle for Morning Prayer during Lent, turning back in our books to the same. We'll read it as we did the psalm. Full, Full of compassion, compassion and mercy and love is God, is God the Most High, the, the Almighty. Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory. <clears throat> all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent a human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. Now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O oh God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is forever and ever. Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was at the beginning, beginning is now, now shall be forever. Amen. 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 Full of compassion, compassion and, mercy and mercy and love is God, is God the Most the High, the Almighty. the Almighty. As we look to turn up Jeremiah 19, towards the beginning of the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures, between half and two-thirds of the way through, if you're following the Holy Bible with the printed edition, with uh, both covenants included. This is a short biography of Oscar Romero. Oscar Anolfo Romero y Galdames was born in a small village in El Salvador in 1917. Ordained priest, he was known as a quiet and unassuming pastor. By 1977, amidst the political and social turmoil suffered by his country, he was therefore seen as a neutral choice to be its archbishop. 
Courageously, however, he began to speak out against violence, and his homilies supported the demands of the poor for economic and social justice. He refused to be silenced and continued to preach even under the threat of assassination. On this day in 1980, whilst presiding at Mass, Archbishop Romero was assassinated by a gunman. He has since been widely regarded as a martyr for the faith. So to our first Bible reading, Jeremiah, we're looking for the large number 19, that's the chapter number, that's the large number at the head of the paragraph, and uh, the small numbers in the text are the verses, we're starting at verse 14, verse 14, chapter 19, and going on to the 6th verse in the 20th chapter. If you're following online, just scroll on to it, it's, uh, we'll scroll back to it, it's just before the canticle we read a moment ago. Jeremiah 19 from 14, thank you David. When Jeremiah came from Topheth, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy, he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I am now bringing upon this city and upon all its towns all the disaster that I have pronounced against it, because they have stiffened their necks, refusing to hear my words. Now the priest of Pashur, son of Imna, Imma, who was chief office, officer in the house of the Lord, heard Jeremiah prophesying these things. And Pashur struck the prophet Jeremiah and put him in the stocks that were in the upper <coughs> Benjamin, that were in the upper Benjamin gate of the house of the Lord. The next morning, when Pasha released Jeremiah from the stocks, Jeremiah said to him, The Lord has named you not Pasha, but terror all around. For thus says the Lord, I am making you a terror to yourself and to your friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies while you look on. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. Then shall he shall carry them captive to Babylon, and shall kill them with the sword. I will give all the wealth of this city, all its gains, all its prized belongings, and all the treasures to the kings of Ju all the treasures of the kings of Judah into the hand of their enemies. We shall plunder them and seize them and carry them to Babylon. And you, Pashur, and all who live in your house shall go into captivity, and to Babylon you shall go. There you shall die, and there you shall be buried, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied falsely. Thank you. And so today in the Church of England, we have people who suddenly realise that they disagree quite strongly with people that they live amongst <clears throat> and are of the view that decisions made, not dissimilar to those decisions made that suggested that women could also operate within the church uh, in the same way as men did. And uh, we've had recently a decision that uh, we would bless people in same-sex relationships and uh, the prayers are being produced. And for some people, that's a step too far. And so even today, we've got people like their senior figures who are hopefully with a little more grace than we see Pasha and Jeremiah. But uh, Jeremiah is his, the book written in his name, so we, I guess, take his side at the reader. But uh, Pasha doesn't think that what Jeremiah is saying is uh, good and helpful, and so wants to try and stop him saying it. I'm reminded both of Jesus being struck by the high priest <coughs> when he was similarly uh, finding himself at variance with the views of the established um, church or the, the temple of his day, but also the way we are today um, locking up um, anti-oil protesters and people who are um, hoping for um, a better life for themselves and their family in terms of their terms and conditions of their um, places of work. And uh, we're seeking to make dissent um, illegal, which is, in my view, a retrograde step. And it's similar here to what is going on with uh, the people in power trying to keep the people who actually, one could say, at least have a different view, but perhaps have the right view, Keep them quiet, and that, to my mind, is a detriment to um, the community that uh, could choose which view they held. 
and very often these situations are not just black and white, they're not just binary one or the other, they're usually much more nuanced, and the more views and, opi uh, uh, views and opinions we have, the easier it is for us to decide that there are elements of this argument that we agree with and elements of that, and so hopefully we can live more peaceably um, with our neighbours and within the church with the different views that people hold in relation to the issues of our time, the LGBTQ plus um, welcome and support for expression, relationship and identity. So to our second reading, John 11, 1 to 16. <clears throat> John is the fourth of the Gospels opening the second covenant. So if you're following the printed Bible off the shelf, two thirds of the way through, you'll find Matthew. As you move towards the back, Mark, Luke, and then John. And we scroll onto it if we're following electronically. It's after the can be read earlier. This time we're looking for the large number 11, chapter 11 this time, and uh, verses 1 to 16. So that's the small numbers in the text, the verses 1 to 16. John 11 from verse 1. Thank you, David. <clears throat> now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, whom you love, and he whom you love is ill. When Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the, God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. After this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are not the twelve hours are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not on them, it's not, it's not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. And Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, that we may die with him. Thank you. <clears throat> this is a very good um, demonstration of just how dense, complex, interwoven, multi-layered, multifaceted the writings that come under the name of John in the Greek scriptures are. <clears throat> Basically, we've got a story here of Jesus being told that a friend is ill. Can you come and pray for him? He goes, but not for a couple of days. And uh, we're left on a bit of a cliffhanger at uh, the end of this excerpt today but he does make his way <clears throat> and uh, Jesus explains to his disciples that uh, he's died so that's the shortened version but this was written as the writings of John fairly late and so the gospel story would be knocking about a bit so it's embellished within the narrative with uh, annotation with commentary um, and so it becomes very complicated and the conversations also are laced with the conversations that people would have had in relation to Lazarus's death and uh, what death is. And so it's a commentary not only on that circumstance, but also it's a sort of a poetic and uh, mystical exploration of what death is alongside this story of somebody dying and asking for Jesus' help, <clears throat> or the family of somebody asking for Jesus' help and then that person dying, which makes it very difficult to read. It might be helpful, perhaps, if it was printed in different colours, so the different bits... Um, one that referred to, uh, this is our theological discussion of death, in one colour. Um, this is the narrative in another colour, etc. 
but it's typical of John. It has to be read several times, really, to get to the gist of it, to the bottom of it, and uh, in a quiet and darkened room, possibly with a glass of red or a coffee, um, and by candlelight, <clears throat> or with the window open, the fresh sound of birdsong coming in through the window, perhaps, this morning. But in short, the idea is that uh, death, for those that believe, isn't the last word. And uh, whilst we are allowed to grieve our loss if people we've known and loved have died, we also, as church, have a hope that they will live on, just as even, indeed, in quantum physics, um, we are increasingly aware that time isn't linear and uh, that the things that make up um, life, atoms, energy, light, are all much more nuanced and complex and uh, relative than we thought under the Newtonian paradigm where everything was very block-like, um, a little bit like looking at uh, the graphics on the first computers, which were sort of centimetre squared or half inch squared uh, chunks of colour. And now we have actually TV quality um, digital generated imagery that is uh, active and mobile, just like a video would be. So be encouraged that death is not the end <clears throat> and that there is still healing. And if we ask for healing and it does not happen, ask again. It took these sisters two or three days before their brother, who died in the meantime after they had first asked to have him restored to them. So to the responsory back in morning prayer during Lent. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love for they are from everlasting. To you, you O Lord, Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, God, in you I trust. The Song of Zechariah, I'm not sure whether the refrain is uh, the standard one for Lent, but if it isn't, you might like to look up on the 24th of March, Oscar Romero, and you might find direction there. But given that it's only commemoration, this is probably the standard um, Lent morning prayer refrain. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. <coughs> to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Sacrifice, Saviour, seal, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the beginning of this day, and we are reminded, it being Friday, of your death in our stead. And we thank you that you who were complete became broken, that we who were fractured may be whole. You <coughs> who were well became broken, that we who are sick may be healed. And you who are rich became poor, that we who are destitute may have privilege. We thank you for that great exchange which you made on our behalf before we even knew you. When we were still far off, as you met us in your son, you brought us home. And we thank you for that. We pray for those today who need to know that great covenant transaction has been 
paid, made on their behalf, that they may walk tall, that they may walk with hope, that they may deal with their anxiety, their sickness, their uh, exclusion. And we pray that we as church stand with all who are on that road today. Amen. With the World Council of Churches, we pray for Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. We are thankful how these countries peaceably became independent after 1918 and 1991. And we pray for just economic development that benefits all citizens in those countries and for those who live and work abroad. Amen. With Christian Action Research and Education, we thank God for major changes in attitudes that are helping to reduce single-use plastics, produce cleaner and more efficient fuel and cut pollution from agriculture and industry. We pray with the, these prayer writers, help us to discover more ways to protect the environment. <clears throat> Amen. From Green Christian. Just uh, looking for this Friday's entry. Curtailing pollution created by pharmaceutical, agriculture and healthcare sectors is essential to reduce the emergence, transition and spread of superbugs, strains of bacteria that have become resistant to every known antibiotic and in other instances and other instances of antimicrobial resistance known as AMR. This is the key message of a report released in February by the UN Environment Programme. And the environment dimensions of AMR are already taking a serious toll on the health of humans, animals and plants as well as the economy. The environmental crisis of our time is also one of human rights and geopolitics. The antimicrobial resistance report published by the programme is another example of inequity in that the AMR crisis is disproportionately affecting countries in what they describe as the global south, says Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley, chair of the One Health Global Leaders Group on Antimicrobial Resistance. Pray for more reports, um, more research, more um, lobbying, more awareness of these issues that uh, we can stand with those, as we've just said, who perhaps don't have the voice that they ought to have in uh, addressing these concerns in their countries. May we have that United Nations global perspective and uh, extend that hope that we can stand with the excluded as church, as uh, Oscar Romero would have applauded uh, in his day. Amen. The Anglican Communion's five marks of mission include our concern for the environment and Pope Francis' prayer towards creation. It includes these lines, teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. Amen. In our benefit cycle of prayer on Fridays, we pray for, I think, our, no we don't, we pray for our voluntary organisations in the town. They include our churches in and around the valley, of course, the people looking after the Millennium Green, the Hasworth Volunteer Centre giving, uh, amongst other things, lifts to hospital to people and supporting people living on their own. We think to you the Men's Shed, <coughs> Men Cap, the Pear Tree Centre and all other expressions of uh, voluntary activity in our community. We thank you for them. Amen. And do we pray for adequate numbers on the committees to maintain their um, core purposes. We thank you for our people. Today we pray for the church wardens in the St Michael group. They are Jane at St Michael's Cookley, uh, newly appointed uh, Jeanette and Chris, <coughs> who has been acting at uh, St Margaret Hevelingham, Emma at St Mary's Huntingfield, and Lee and Ken continuing at St Mary's Walpole. Electoral role at Cookley include Roy, Robert, Katrina, Margaret, Mark, Nicola, Valerie, Robert, Joanna, Susan, Alan and Dooney, and uh, in Huntingfield, David, generally Susan, David, Marion, Patrick, Sally, Ann, Roger, Jackie, Judith, Barry, Jacqueline, Jane, Tony, Dooney and Sue. And there we pray for these and ask that they may be inspired as they serve on the PCCs, as they are part of the wider community, uh, looking to maintain the building, that it may be used as uh, possibly in some cases in these places the only public building, as it were, um, in which people may um, have exhibitions, music, meetings, and uh, worship alongside that. We pray for encouragement as these people maintain that uh, tradition and that offer in these villages. Please draw others uh, alongside them to build and develop their capability and capacity that that offer may grow in strength, vigour and vision. Amen. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. The Collect for Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from, from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.